Hi everyone, it's Vicky here and welcome to Create 8. Today I'm excited to show you the 8 cards that I have created using the latest release by my favorite things. For the first card today I'm going to use this Kitchi Kitchen stamp set and I'm going to use the teapot, a couple of teacups, the banana, the plate and the bits and pieces from the stamp set. But I am going to stamp everything in a different color. The little ink cubes that I am using are by my favorite things and you can see the colors I am using on your screen right now. But as always you will find the full list of all the supplies that I am using today down below in the description area. Now I am going to stamp them uh, twice just to get a nice impression and I am using my Misty to do so. So you can see here I have stamped some of the images, but there is a stamp for a layering stamp for the banana uh, that I am going to place exactly on top of it and then I'm going to stamp again and this is going to add uh, the shadows for the banana top and the bottom, which makes it look more realistic. Now it's time to do some die cutting and as you can see there is a die that cuts out a shelf and uh, I am going to use this cardstock, this is actually wood crane textured cardstock that I am going to color with my distress inks and then I am going to use that die to cut out the shelves. So you can see here I have already placed everything, all the little dies on top of the images and now I am going to pop everything out. And now I am ready to assemble my card. So first of all I'm going to work on a white cardstock that is slightly smaller than a standard card and as I need a little bit of something at the background but at the same time to be very subtle I am going over it with some distress ink with that stencil. This is a stencil that uh, came out, was released by my favorite things last month. So now I'm happy with how my background is looking and all I have to do is to stick all the images on top and create my kitchen wall. I'm going to use some uh, glue pen at the back of all those images and start sticking everything down and uh, this card really came out very quickly and what I loved it is that uh, most of the stamps in the stamp set are actually solid stamps so they don't have wide open areas that you need to color with your favorite coloring uh, method instead you just stamp and you get uh, that color inside really quick and easy to create cards like that so as you can see I have uh, used my craft knife to create some uh, slits in uh, those cups so that I can put one inside of the other and since they are so bulky I am adding some strong adhesive at the back and I'm going to stick them just next to the pot and continue sticking everything down. After sticking everything down it's time to add the sentiment so you can see that I am chopping uh, the sentiment in half. This says happiness is handmade and it comes from the stamp set that is called You Bake Me Happy. I have stamped the sentiment with black ink and now my panel is ready to stick on top of my card base. My card base is a top folding card that's a standard card that's four and a quarter by five and a half and I'm going to stick my panel on top with some uh, foam tape at the back. At this point the card is ready but you can go ahead and embellish it as much as you like, you can add glossy accents on the plates, on the teapot and the cups, but I decided to go just with a clear wink of Stella to add a touch of uh, shine. And now let's move on to the second card and for this card I'm going to use these adorable otters. I'm really in love with this set and I am really happy with how this card came out. So first of all I'm going to choose uh, some of uh, those adorable images and I'm going to stamp them with black ink. And from the stamp with the owls I have uh, chosen the little heart to stamp as well. So I have a fish, a heart and two little otters. Now this is going to be a birthday card and since I am going to use my alcohol markers to color everything I used my Memento Toxito Black Ink to stamp my images. So I'm now going to do my coloring and then use the dies to cut out everything. I will end up having two hearts at the end, 
two fish and two otters. Now I have cut out everything and I'm going to use this parchment paper to be my sea. This is actually a leftover from a kit that I had by Simon Says Stamp. So I'm going to make sure that I stick this die nice and straight. And since this is not that big, I am going to make sure that I continue that wave. You see how I place it, making sure that it is a continuous line. I also check at the back. And then I'm going to cut again, and this is going to fit perfectly in front of my card. So this way I have the C on top of my card, but at the same time the C is transparent, so if I place something at the back, you will still be able to see it. Now in the dies, there is this uh, tiny little wave die that um, you can use to cut a slit inside your C, so that I can... Uh, put inside that otter and I think this is looking adorable and at the same time you are not losing the detail on all that uh, coloring in the otters. If that was uh, just blue paper you wouldn't be able to see what's underneath. So I am really happy with uh, that idea and uh, I'm going to place two of them in the sea and I have already cut out another slit where I am going to place the fish. I have uh, two fish, one is uh, orange and the other one is uh, green, I believe. And uh, now, if you stick that directly on top of your card base by placing uh, your tape all over, you will be able to see the tape and it's not going to look good. So I am uh, covering up the tape only behind the others. This is enough tape to stick uh, the parchment paper and the others on the card. I'm going to place the last fish on my little scene. And now the hearts. Now again the hearts are not from the same stamp set with the otters, they came from the owls set. I'm going to stick one with uh, foam tape at the back and the other one is going to go flat directly on my card base. This is going to add a little bit of dimension and those hearts are actually going to be balloons. So this is going to be a birthday card with that little otter sticking his hand out of the water and holding the balloons. Now I am going to decide which um, sentiment I'm going to stamp. And I am going with the one that says have an utterly great birthday, which I am going to cut in three parts so that I have have in the first row, utterly in the second row and great birthday in the third row. And as you can see, I am going to do some uh, coloring in the sentiment. So for the word utterly, I used tropical teal. This is a color by my favorite things. And I think it matches perfectly the parchment paper of the sea and uh, it completes the card. Now all I have to do is to draw the strings for my balloons. So first of all I'm going to do that with uh, my pencil just to make sure that I'm happy with how those uh, lines look. And then I'm going to go over them with my thin black marker. Now of course you can go ahead and embellish your card even more, like add glossy accents on the balloons. I decided to go just with my clear Wink of Stella glitter pen, but I couldn't leave those noses of the otters alone, so I just had to add some gloss on top of them. Aren't they super cute? I think this is a must-have stamp set. Now for this card I'm going to use this stitched heart grid and you can see that it consists of two parts. For the first part I'm going to place it at the center of this white panel. I'm going to make sure that it's nice and straight and then I'm going to pass it through my Sizzix machine. You will see that this is not going to cut out anything, instead it's just going to place the grid, the stitched lines, on my panel. And with the second die, I'm just going to place it on top of this uh, red cardstock, which is going to cut out this grid that you can use if you wish so, or you can use the hearts. In this case, I'm going to use the hearts, but for the grid, it's going to, I'm not going to throw it away, I'm going to use it as a template, so that I, I know exactly where to stick my hearts. So I am placing it on top of the grid, and this way, all those stitched lines are exactly at the, for exactly at the center of those uh, lines of hearts. So I'm going to stick uh, one heart after the other and while I am sticking them I just uh, add glue at the center of those hearts so this way I can uh, add a curve to the hearts so they stick out a little bit and this way it's going to add a little bit of dimension. When I stick, once I stick everything down 
I'm going to remove that template at the top and this is going to leave me with all those hearts looking dimensional and they are exactly lined up with the stitched grid on the white cardstock. Now I want to add the message at the bottom of this panel and for that I'm going to use the well-connected alphabet and uh, I'm going to write sending love. Now I want to show you how I'll do that just to make sure that everything is nicely placed. So the, the letter D is at the center of the word sending. So I'm just going to start stamping the word sending by stamping first the letter D. So I am uh, having a um, baby wipe ready to go and uh, I'm going to stamp D at the center and then I'm going to uh, slowly go and stamp all the other letters. As I am stamping everything I make sure that I connect those little tails at the end of each letter and this way I have a nice script letter as if it was handwritten. So notice how I use one letter, a stamp, and then wipe it out on my baby wipe, place it back in the, at its place, and then move on to the next letter. And I'm going to do the same thing for spelling out the word love underneath. And now I have my panel ready to go. I am going to add some tape adhesive at the back and stick it directly on top of this card base. This is a red cardstock that I have folded to be a top folded card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. You can add some uh, shine on the cards if you like so, but I decided to leave it as it is, clean and simple. For this card I'm working just with Dynamics to create my little card, so these are the mailbox dies. I have also used those clouds from the Cloud9 and also the one of the slopes from the stitched scallop basic edges. I have worked to cut them out just by using plain cardstock, so white for the clouds, green for the grass, I decided to have my mailbox red, so I just went ahead and cut out all the pieces with my Sizzix machine. And all I have to do now is to uh, assemble my card, so I am adding some tape adhesive at the back, and I am sticking one on top of the other. Now for the mailbox, and just because I want to have the letters coming from the inside, I am going to stick the basic part at the top of my card, but for the top part I am going to use some uh, foam tip at the back. This is going to create some dimension, which is going to have the actual box a little bit raised. You will see what I mean at the moment. So I am going to cut out just thin strips of uh, foam tape to go all around it. I am then going to peel it off and stick it on top of uh, my box. So I have an opening at the front to stick uh, the letters inside. Now although you cannot see it at uh, the moment, the white uh, little pieces that I have there are the letters and they actually have some uh, embossing on top of them, so they are not just white uh, rectangles. You can tell that in real life, but it's so hard with all the lights that I have in my studio. So I am sticking down the clouds. And to make my letters cuter, I have punched out tiny little hearts from the same cardstock that I have used for the mailbox. And I am sticking them on top to close my letters. I'm just fighting with those tiny little pieces and my glue pen. And then I'm going to place them inside that box. Now again remember that this is slightly raised, which allows me to place the letters inside. Now for my sentiment I went ahead and cut out a banner. Uh, to cut it out I used white cardstock with the stitch sentiment strips. And I'm also going to use the Love is in the Mail stamp set and stamp Happy Mail. I added some foam tape at the back. I'm going to cut out uh, what sticks out, place some tape at the back and I'm going to place that directly on top of my card base and this is going to complete my card. And for this card I only stamped the sentiment, everything else is just cut out by using the Dynamics dies. Now let's make a fun card, this die is called uh, flop card hard, you have to take it apart and let's make a flip card, this is so much fun. Now I am going to make sure that this is going to be placed at the center, add uh, just uh, some post-it to 
hold it in place. I'm going to open it up. Don't forget to open this up, otherwise you are going to cut out the back of your card base. And I'm going to run it through my Sizzix machine. Now notice how this is not going to cut all the way through. It's only going to cut around the heart, but it is going to give you those score lines. And uh, your flip card is almost ready, so all you have to do now is to embellish it. So I'm going to use the other part of this die, the heart, and I'm going to cut out hearts out of this uh, cardstock. And once I have my hearts ready, they give you a beautiful stitching all around those uh, hearts. I'm going to stick them directly on top of that shape or my flip card. And I am going to do the same thing at the back. And it's looking beautiful already. Now for the sentiment, I am going to go with uh, the one that says, guess who's missing you, and this comes from the Owls set. I am going to stamp it directly on top of this banner that I have cut out. Again, I used the Dynamics dies for uh, cutting out this uh, banner, and uh, I guess that this is one of the dies that I use all the time. I think it's very handy to have one uh, of these to stamp your sentiments. So anyway, I am going to stick that directly on top of my heart. I'm going to add some uh, foam tape at the back. And now on the inside of my card, I want to have uh, this heart again, but I want it to be placed at the exact same position as the other hearts. So I'm going to place it on top of uh, the other one close the flap and my card is at the exactly same position. So now all I have to do is to stick uh, there one little owl. So I am deciding to use this one because I just love her eyelashes. I'm going to stamp it with uh, memento ink and I'm going to color it with my alcohol markers. I used my Spectrum Noir markers to do so. So my owl is already cut out and I have also used the arrow and one more of those banners that I use all the time to stamp my sentiments. So the whole sentiment from that stamp set says, guess who's missing you? Me. But I didn't stamp the word me on the outside and I'm going to stamp it on this tiny little banner that uh, my owl is going to hold. Now if you see her uh, a little hand, let's say it's a hand, is sticking out, so I am going to give her uh, that arrow to hold and this arrow is going to be a little flag actually with that banner sticking out. Now as I am going to stick everything down I'm going to make sure that nothing is going to show from the front. When you close the card you won't be able to see anything. So it's a nice little surprise. I think this uh, card also came out really adorable and I just cannot stop playing with it. Now, anyway, I just couldn't uh, leave it as it is. I wanted to add some uh, glitter on uh, the owl. So I'm using my Nuvo Glitter Drops. This is going to dry clear, but it adds uh, glitter on top. And my card is ready. For this card I'm going to use this beautiful background and uh, I'm going to do some embossing. Now of course you can uh, stamp the beautiful background and if you love coloring just use your favorite method and you will see that you get a beautiful design. So now I'm going to place my white cardstock on top, I'm going to press it with my fingers, I am making sure that I'm not moving the paper at all. I'm going to peel it off and now I have a nice impression, although you cannot see it, it's actually there. And then I'm going to apply some gold embossing powder. And you will see the beautiful design that you get. I'm going to heat set everything. And I hope you can see the beautiful glows that I get. So this is going to be the background for my card and I'm going to use the Big Hugs uh, Dynamics die to cut out those letters. And of course I am going for a shaker card. You, all, you know already that I always go for at least one shaker card when I am making more than one cards in a video. So I am adding my tape all around that, uh, those windows. I am making sure that everything is going to stick nicely. And then I am going to add on top a piece of acetate. I used foam tape to go all around the window and now I am adding some uh, sequins and um, this is a sequin mix in gold. So I'm going to cover up the window and I have covered it up with uh, gold uh, paper. 
And I'm going to add some uh, tape at the back of this window and stick it directly on top of my card base. For my card base, I have chosen this gold cardstock, which is going to go beautifully with the sequins as well as the gold embossed uh, background. And my card is ready. Now this is going to be a fun card and it's perfect for uh, those little boys in your life. And um, I am going to use these Dynamics uh, dies. This is called um, Castle. And of course I'm going to build my own castle. So I have cut out the wall, I'm going to cut out the towers and uh, bits and pieces from uh, the Dynamics set. And now I'm uh, marking where this uh, window is going to fall and um, from the tower and I am going to use my craft knife and uh, I am going to cut out uh, the top of my card front. And the idea is to be able to see on the inside of the card from the top as if uh, it is a continuous scene. You will see what I mean in, uh, later on. So I'm just chopping off the top of my card front. And you can see how it is looking at the moment. Now I have all the bits and pieces ready to go for my castle and uh, since this is a castle I wanted to add some texture on it so I decided to use the um, wall stencil by Tim Holtz which I am going to apply on top and with my finger dabber I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, ink. I'm not going very heavily over it, I just want to have a little bit of texture. I'm going to do that on uh, the wall as well as on all the towers. So I have stenciled everything and you can see how my castle parts are looking at the moment. And I'm going to stick uh, the top of the towers where they belong. So as you can see I have cut out uh, parts of uh, my castle using um, a lighter and a darker shade of uh, grey. And now it's time to assemble my card. And as I am placing everything on top of my card, notice how I am going to do the exact same thing at the back. So whatever is in the front, it's going to be at the back. And you won't be able to see all those ugly pieces sticking out. And this is going to cover up the part that I have chopped off. So now I am going to stick down the doors, one at the front and one at the back. And at the bottom of my castle I'm going to stick some uh, green pattern paper so that I have my, the grass and this is going to complete the scene at the front and at the back. Now for the inside of the card I am going to add some uh, broken china to create the sky. I am applying it with my blending tool. And I'm also going to stick uh, the grass there. Uh, notice how I am going to align the grass on uh, the other side as if it is a continuous line. So I have uh, cut out this uh, hillside by using the stitched uh, edges. I'm going to cut out the excess with my scissors and stick some clouds to my sky. These again are uh, cutouts by using the cloud 9 dies. And I like how you can see the sky from the front and not only on the inside. Now I am going to add the focal point which is going to be a knight. So I am going to stamp this knight on his horse. I am going to color him with my Spectrum Noir uh, markers and then I am going to cut him out. But first I am going to stamp the sentiment and for that I am going with one uh, sentiment that was included in the stamp set. I used black ink to stamp the sentiment and it says you are my knight in shining armor. So after using my Spectrum Noir markers, I have my knight ready to go. I'm going to stick him down on the inside of the card. And just because the sentiment says shining armor, I'm going to add some shine on this. And for that I'm using my silver gel pen. Now I'm not going to put anything else on the front, but you can go ahead if you like and add even more elements, like the dragon for example at the front. And we are all ready to card 8 for today. So for that I'm going for uh, a princess card. I am going to stamp the princess, her castle, little bits and pieces from this stamp set. 
and I'm going to color everything with my Spectrum Noir markers. I'm going to use a dynamic set that matches perfectly these dies to cut them out. And again, I have cut out my hillside, just like I did for the previous card, as well as the clouds from Cloud9 stamp set. And now it's time to assemble my card. I'm going to stick the grass on top of a pale blue cardstock. I'm going to stick um, the castle at the background and I'm tucking it in underneath the grass as if it's uh, far away at the background. And for the princess, I am adding a little bit of uh, foam tape at the back of her. So this is going to pop her at the front and add a little bit of dimension to my card. I am adding a tiny little uh, foam square as well on uh, her tiny friend, that little bird, as well as on the butterfly. I have chosen one of the sentiments that says happy birthday, I hope it's magical, which I am going to stamp directly on top of my sky with black ink. And now I am going to surround that sentiment to complete my scene with some of those clouds. And I am going to stick this panel on top of my card base, which is a standard card that's four and a quarter by five and a half in white. And you simply can't have a princess card without some glitter, so just had to add some on uh, the castle, the princess, uh, their crowns. And this is going to complete the card. And now let's take a quick look on all the cards that I made today. And these were the cards for today, I hope you had fun and got inspired. And if you did, don't forget to leave me a comment as well as give me a thumbs up on my YouTube channel. Create Date is going to come back on February, featuring the next release by my favorite things. Thank you all for watching!